Hello again, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Today we're showing Pearls of Nyoka. Now, we always have trouble when we show Jungle Girl cereal, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed this time. We can make it all the way through without anything happening bad with it, this copy. So, here we go, parts one through five of the Pearls of Nyoka, and it's in somewhat living color. Thanks again. I'm Torino, friend of Volturas. Gracious Voltura has told me to obey your orders, Effendi. Where is the Campbell expedition? There. Two of them stand before their accursed house. Pooh! <laughs> Buongiorno, signore. I'm looking for Professor Campbell. I'm Douglas Campbell. Count Benito Torini of the Italian Colonial Secretariat. I am ordered to escort your expedition to the Italian mandated territory. You're most welcome, Count Torini. We've been expecting you. This is my associate in ancient languages, Mr. John Spencer. Signor. How do you do? My government tells me you are seeking the legendary tablets of Hippocrates. Not legendary. The tablets exist together with other treasures of great value. The papyrus left by Hippocrates himself describes the actual hiding place of the tablets. Then you have the papyrus? No, no, it's, it's being brought here from a Coptic monastery in Ethiopia. We were hoping you might have some news of the men who are bringing it. Dr. Grayson and Major Reynolds. Professor Campbell, Doc and the Major coming. Hey, I've got the papyrus, right here. Splendid, splendid. Red, take the horses. Yes, sir. Oh, Dr. Grayson, Major Reynolds, Count Torini. Doctor, how do you do? No. How do you do, sir? See what you can make out of it, Spencer. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Gentlemen, I'm, I'm afraid I can't translate this papyrus. In modern times, only one man ever completely mastered the ancient Assyrian in which this is written. That man was Henry Gordon. Gordon's dead. We're not certain of that, Spencer. His daughter, Nyoka, never admitted his death. You were a member of his expedition, and you believe he's dead, don't you? Well, I am not sure. You see, I was wounded in the early part of the attack. But I contacted Nyoka some months later through friendly Bedouins, and she told me then that she would never leave the desert until she had found her father or had conclusive proof of his death. But the papyrus is no use to us without Gordon to translate it. It may be. Nyoka Gordon was thoroughly schooled by her father. She'll translate the papyrus for us. Your pardon, gentlemen. But is this papyrus so vastly important? It's the key to the greatest secret of the ancients, the golden tablets of Hippocrates. And these tablets are of gold, you say? Yes. Their commercial value is large, to say nothing of the huge treasures buried with them. But their real worth is their great value to humanity. Spoken like a true physician, Dr. Grayson. 
Engraved on the Hippocratic tablets is the secret of the only cure for cancer the world has ever known. Why don't we ask Nyoka Gordon to come here and translate the papyrus? By all means. I'll send Ibrahim with a message to have her come here at once, gentlemen. I must send a message to Voltura at once. Write it. Here are the wings for your message. expedition has the papyrus and he's awaiting Nyoka Gordon who alone can translate it. You must act quickly, Torini. If this is true, it is fortunate indeed, Maghreb, that you didn't kill this Nyoka as I ordered a few months ago. She's the only one who can lead us to the treasure of Hippocrates. Order my horses. My cape. you to this humble huddle of tents, gracious one. Confidential matter, Cassin. Let's go into your tent. <laughs> Refreshments, gracious one? We haven't time. Get your men together. Nyoka Gordon must be captured at once. Why, Voltura? She's of no interest to us. Does it interest you to know that she holds the secret of the treasure her father hoped to find? The riches of Hippocrates? None other. Move quickly, I tell you. Come, Satan. Danger may lurk in this cave on Ioka. Let me send men with you. Satan could crush a dozen men. He'll protect me. You keep Nyoka's Bedouins away from the cave. We'll do the rest. and his desert dogs. Where's Nyoka? She rode out in the early morning. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
to go unharmed for a while. Get up and come with us. See that she's well secured. Volturo may have need of her when she returns with the papyrus. Volturo. Don't use that name, Torini. Here, I'm Nyoka. No wonder you rule the desert. You're always right. But there's trouble ahead. With the expedition, there's a Major Reynolds who knows Nyoka. Does anyone else know her? No, I'm certain he's the only one. Then arrange for me to meet him first. Alone. You can silence him unaided? Easily. A poison needle brings death swifter than a bullet. If you'll be in front of their quarters in five minutes, I'll see that the Major is there to greet you. Major Reynolds. Nyoka. Why, you don't look like... Why, I don't recognize you. Perhaps I've changed since you saw me last. It's nice to see you again. Well, thank... The stone in your ring is sharp. For a purpose, Major. The hurt won't trouble you at all. It may be absurd, but I feel faint. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You feel as though you were dying. Perhaps death is the message I bring you. That's a silly thing to say. What's the trouble here, Major? Major. What's the Major? Is he dead? Yes. Heart attack, I'd say. May I ask who you are? I'm Nyoka. Nyoka Gordon. This is terrible. It is Nyoka's. Early Fang leads us on a true trail. You stay here and guard the white girl. We ride to set the ambush. Let her escape and you will find death a pleasant relief from your punishment. Come. will only be trapped. Fang, it's up to you. Go find Nyoka.
We must stop Kassib's men. They go to attack white friends of mine on the Wadi Batha road. Yes, Sahiba. Go home, Fang. Go home. The signal! Remember, Voltura and the Italian Torini must not be harmed. their plans. That cursed Nyoka. What evil spirit brought her here? Looks like they're on our side. Phew, the Arabs that ambushed us. Altura, Allah be praised. Come, I have the papyrus. I crawled away to get more ammunition. When I returned, the professor was unconscious and she was gone. And the papyrus with her. That's a shame. I've always felt that the papyrus would give me a definite clue to my father. I know he isn't dead. What do you think Voltura's next move will be? To take the papyrus to her temple and have it translated if she can. Would it be possible to attack their temple and recover it? The place is too well manned and fortified. However, one or two people might be able to sneak in. You and I can do it. Oh, I say you can't do that. I have a hunch we can. The expedition is stuck here until Red can patch up that tire. But Nyoka and I can carry on. Dr. Grayson is right, Professor. Abu can show you back to my camp. Your mechanic can bring the car in later. Let's get at it.
Drop those guns. <laughs> Tie him up, Naoka. I'm sorry about your robot. As I have said before, it's in a strange tongue and beyond even my power to translate it. But Nyoka knows, and those imbeciles allowed her to escape. Answer the summons. Take that papyrus. Get it, Nyoka.
Well? We could not find them, Voltura. They've escaped. Nayoka mustn't escape. Without her, we can never find the treasure. Order my chariot. I'm going to Kassib's camp. Advance, gracious one. My cape. I must get my hands on that girl. She's probably in her cave with the professor's expedition. It would be silly indeed to attack their camp. Yes, I know. I have a scheme to outwit them. Send Ahmed to their camp with a flag of truce. He will tell them that you have sent him to... a follower of Cassib, the Jack all of Voltura. He says he is the bearer of a message. A message? What is it? My master, Cassib, has sent me to ask if you wish to buy the papyrus, which gives directions for finding the golden tablets of Hippocrates. What? Cassib has the papyrus? Yes. Since the attempt to take it from the temple, Voltura saw fit to give it to him to guard. But Cassib tires of being servant to Voltura. He will sell the papyrus for a thousand lira. If one of your men will bring the money and come with me to the Wadi of Red Stones, the papyrus will be handed over to him. A thousand lira is cheap enough for the key to the greatest medical knowledge in all history. But how can we be sure this offer is legitimate? I think it is. I know these natives. Kassab would probably sell out his own brother for a thousand lira. I'm willing to act as emissary myself. I believe it's safe enough. Of course, they might be trying to sell us a spurious document. I'm not sure I could recognize the real papyrus. Now, if someone who understood the language were... I'll go with you. I don't like it, Nyoka. This might be a trap. I'll risk that. Remember, I'm more interested than any of you in finding the tablets. They're the only clue I have for locating my father. Abu, saddle two horses and lock up Fangs so that he can't follow us. Yes, Sahiba. Are you sure your man will be there? Yes, Sahiba, he will be there. Remain on guard here. Come with us, Sahiba. If you come quietly, no harm will befall you. Get down. Don't shoot. Voltura wants to take an unharmed.
they've been gone over an hour. I'm beginning to be worried. Naoka would take any chance if she thought it would help her find her father. Magnificent character. Indomitable spirit. What he means is that Naoka gal's got plenty of moxie jitters. Moxie? Well, I'm going to go after her. treachery. Two men ambushed us and our guide took my gun and horse. Where's Nyoka? I don't know. She broke away and they rode after her. Which way'd they go? Well, I don't... Never mind. Fang can trail them. Find Nyoka, Fang. yourself a lot of pain. All I ask is that you translate this papyrus. I've already given you my answer. Very well. It'll take some time for me to figure this out. But not too long or I'll have you stretched out on that rack again.
Dr. Grayson. They have returned safely. Well, well, Steve, I'm worried about you. Yeah, what happened, Larry? Where have you been? The whole thing was an air trick. Volturo wanted Ioka to translate the papyrus. Horini told us about that. Volturo won't need me now. I've got the papyrus. You have? Great, let's see. Yeah. Papyrus? Can you read it? What does it say? Do you think you can translate it, Ioka? Yes. The first section tells of the golden tablets of Hippocrates on which are inscribed medical secrets, including the cure for a dread disease. That undoubtedly refers to cancer. When Egypt was conquered by the Romans, these tablets, together with a vast store of treasure, were removed and hidden away. Does it say where? Not exactly, but it tells a way to find out. We must go to the lair of the eagles. After penetrating to its far end, you will come to the Tunnel of Bubbling Death. Tunnel of Bubbling Death. Weird sort of name, isn't it? Passing through this tunnel, you will then reach the ancient valley of the Toregs. Toregs? Originally, they were cave dwellers. Within the Toreg caves, there is an inscription which will point the way to the golden tablets of Hippocrates. And the priceless medical knowledge to aid humanity. Of a certainty, Doctor. But many dangers lie ahead of us. When can we leave Torini? Why, uh, I must go to Wadi Bartha to send a message to my government first. Uh, merely a routine matter. You can be back by noon? Almost certainly. Fine, we'll be ready and waiting for you. Find out, Torini. Nayoka has translated the papyrus. It directs us through the lair of the eagles, where a mysterious tunnel runs into the valley of the Torex. I've heard about the tunnel in that valley. But what about the tablets and the treasure? In the caves of the Torex, there's an inscription that will reveal the secret. When does the expedition leave? At noon. You must act quickly. Yes, Torini. Return to them at once before they become suspicious. Margaret. No one is going to touch that treasure except me. Cassid must stop the expedition before it reaches the tunnel. Ride to his village and tell him that... Take your post here while we ride ahead and see that the Italian Torini is not harmed. Some of the boys and change that tire. Okay. Cassib and some of his men may be planning trouble for us at the bridge. That's right. You and I'd better ride ahead and look the situation over. We'll meet the rest of your boys at the bridge. Right. The 
Beyond that bridge lies the lair of the eagles. We'll leave the horses here. Ripper, Tala, some of the infidel dogs may escape and attempt to follow us. After we cross, destroy the bridge and return with the horses to the camp. Come. Great Catsup knows about the tunnel. We better get there as fast as we can. Come, we have lost much time. You remain here on guard. the tunnel of bubbling death. How do we get through to the Torek Valley? There are three passages. Let us each take one and see where they lead. Cassim's men. It's going to be dangerous.
before it reaches the Torek Valley. Right. This seems to be the tunnel described in the papyrus. We'll wait here for the infidels. you tell me, I am certain you have discovered the tribe of Toreg sun worshippers still living in the Lost Valley. The sun goddess. She once ruled the Toregs, and according to legend, she is eternally young. Her people conquered the world. They rode over the land, slaying and plundering, until Al and his wrath caused the mountains to fall in on them, destroying all but a few survivors in the Lost Valley. Do you want us to attack their stronghold? No. But if the sun goddess were to appear before them today, who could deny her claim to rule? The gracious one is wise. I'll make arrangements for our departure immediately. Come in, Loba. Thank you, Master. Did you bring me the stones that make fire? Warriors bringing fire stones. Good. Valley of the Toregs. How still and deserted it seems. Like the Valley of the Dead, isn't it? We've seen no signs of Kassim. We should leave Abu and the Bedouins here to keep watch. That's a splendid idea. They can prevent any attack from the rear. I'll explain to Abu. Infidels are in the valley. Summon the warriors. Bring those grenades. Hey! The presence of strangers in our valley is a bad omen. No longer will we have peace and happiness. They must be driven out. Go!
try to hold him back. You go on. We can dig in here and hold them off indefinitely. We cannot prevail against their weapons. We'll have to wait till nightfall. I wonder if we could talk to their chief under a flag of truce. That's not a bad idea. We can try. It may be dangerous business, but it's our only chance to get out of here. Yeah, that's right. You now make the attempt, Professor. Red, pick up a flag of truce. Larry, I want to go along. Maybe I can learn something about my father. You're too valuable to the expedition to take any risks. You'd better stay here. They want to talk. Come. We are friends. We want no strangers in our midst. The sun goddess. I'm returning to my people in their hour of need. Our troubles are many. Take me to your master. I tell you, Saidi, the sun goddess is only a legend. Please, Master. My eyes do not deceive me. Where is she? In the assembly room. Very well. Infidel. What is the meaning of this? These infidels have killed many to learn the secret our people have held sacred through the ages. They forced their way into our valley to steal the sacred golden tablets. 
inscribed by our ancient chiefs. For that crime, they must die. Chase them. infidel.
怎么了？
The description room is behind a lion statue in a Toreg cave corridor. This is my chance to get it. But, Senorina, alone they'll kill you. Most of the Toregs have joined the attack. If I can get past them, I'll be safe. The risk is too great. You're too important to our expedition. But I must find my father, and the inscription may lead me to him. Well, I'm sorry. It's too dangerous. the girl to disobey Professor Campbell. She's trying to sneak through those insane savages to the caves. But, Sahib, she would not listen to me. What nerve! We can't let her be killed. You stay here and keep the Torex busy. I'm going after it. There's nothing in the lower caves. We must not fail. Come, we'll search all the passages on this level. Not yet. She may lead us to that inscription.
if you can find the inscription. horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. This is a story of one of the most mysterious characters to appear in the early days of the West. He was a fabulous individual, a man whose presence brought fear to the lawless and hope to those who wanted to make this frontier land their home. He was known as the Lone Ranger. When the pioneers settled in the West, bringing civilization and the roots of progress to the barren plains, the Indian chiefs sent their braves out on the warpath to burn the settlements and kill those who pushed the wagon trains forward, until the great white father in Washington sent his soldiers to make peace with the Indians. The most warlike of the chiefs was Lame Bear. Finally, even he had smoked a pipe of peace with the army. The white men were ordered to keep out of Lame Bear's territory. Here is the war horse, Black Cloud, fiery veteran of a hundred campaigns, the most famous horse between our coasts. Black Cloud, Chief Lame Bear's war horse. Hmm. After the battle Lame Bear put up against the army, he's just about the most publicized horse in the country. What an act I could build around that animal. But do you think you can buy him for me, Madrigo? Money will buy anything, Barlam. Especially that kind of money. Five thousand. That's for Lame Bear. And another five for you when you deliver Black Cloud to me in St. Louis. It's a deal. Good. Come on, Shorty. We're going to be busy. Good luck, Madrigo. I make my own luck, Barlam. Ten thousand. Pretty good pay for delivering a horse, eh? Yeah, but five thousand of it's for Lame Bear. Yeah? There's more ways of getting a horse than paying for it. You ought to know that. Fight hunters, Toto. Ah. If they're after Buffalo, they're heading for trouble. You know, this territory is reserved to Chief Lame Bear, and Lame Bear won't stand for trespassers. Come on, Toto. We'd better warn them. and the other's mask. Now, what in the blazes? Take are... it easy. This is no hold-up, or they wouldn't show themselves. Maybe they want some grub. Remember to keep your mouth shut about what we're after. If 
word gets to Lame Bear that we're after Black Cloud, we're going to be out of luck. Don't worry, Matt. We don't talk. Howdy. Hello. Hide hunters, eh? That's right. Hide hunters. What's up? Need some grub? What's the mask for? The mask is my business, and we're not after food. You're Matt Madrigo, aren't you? That's right. How'd you know? Aren't many hide hunters left. Recognize you from your description. Tano and I want to warn you that you're trespassing on territory reserved to Chief Lame Bear. You entered it when you crossed the green. If you know it's healthy, you'll turn back. Maybe we don't care about our health. And if we don't, who's going to spoil it for us? Lame Bear will. He'll try to anyhow. And maybe the Army. The Army wants to keep peace in this section. All right, you've warned us. Thanks. I take it you're not turning back, then. What do you think? I think you're looking for trouble. That's our right, isn't it? You'll find it. Montano, these gentlemen are looking for trouble. We're wasting their time. And you may be wasting your scalps. <laughs> I sure put a burr in his tail. All right, Beggs, whip up the horses. Like the masked man said, we're wasting time. You'd better ride to the fort, Tonto. Ask Colonel Graves for a detachment to turn them back. Mm, me do. If them after Buffalo, them bear get plenty mad. Yes, and start on the warpath. He's only looking for an excuse to fight these days. You go to the fort. I'll ride to Lazat's trading post and see that Lane Bear learns about this in the right way. Get going, Tonto. I'll pick up your trail later. Me go now. Chief Lane Bear's son and a trusted brave made camp. The boy was pleased with the truce between his father and the white men. He went about his work tending the fire, unaware of the danger that lurked near, very near. Then suddenly his companion had a feeling that they were being watched. But he saw no one. You and Tom go after Black Cloud. Sam and I are here with the Redskins. Beggs, you follow me. We'll make a circle and come in behind them. so good, he's plumb wholesome. Forget this one over your saddle. I'll go back and see how the boys made out with the horse. He wants this one first. He may come in handy for a hostage if we need him. He's Chief Lame Bear's son. Tied up? Yeah, he sure put up a fight. It's quite a job. And the Indians? Them just tied him and throw him in the wagon. Good. Now, our job is to get back to the railroad as soon as we can. Let's get going. Hey, Give me the rest. The wounded Indian boy struggles to reach his horse to report to Chief Lame Bear with a message that will touch off the fires of war. Nestled among barren mountains in Indian territory is the Burnt Hills Trading Post, to which the Lone Ranger has ridden to talk to Chief Lame Bear. Man with mask, speak with straight tongue. Lame Bear, 
do nothing now. I don't know how you got him to promise to let the army handle Madrid go high, but you did. <laughs> It's trouble. Madrigo made off with Lambert's son and his war horse. Lambert's raging. We got to get out of here. You're right, Lazar. You get to your horse. I'll cover you in case of trouble. Them, They'll go back to their village. And what you want to bet? In another hour, they're on their war back. Yes, and ready to kill every white man who gets in the way. We'll have to warn the army. Quickest way to the fort is through that saddle. But the quickest way to the army is to follow on Madrigo's trail. Tano is to get a detachment of soldiers who turn them back. We'll head off this way. I'm sure. I'm Lieutenant Bannister. You're trespassing on territory reserved to Lane Bear's tribe. I've come to order you back. You're a little late, aren't you, Lieutenant? I've already turned back. Turned back when him and that masked partner of his told us to. First I knew we'd been trespassing. You're a hide hunter, aren't you? That's right. What have you got in that wagon? Take a look for yourself. doing over there. Take a look for yourself. One of our horses is bogged down. Indian, you're wasting my time. Take him and get White Eagle out of the brush. Throw them both in the wagon. And get Black Cloud and time on behind. We hadn't have seen them soldiers coming when we did. We'd have been prisoners by now. And they'd have been taking us back to the fort. <laughs> You're lucky, Matt. Uh-huh. I told you I make my own luck. I don't like it, Lazar. This is where Madrigo camped. The cavalry were here enough without taking him into custody. His trail goes on. The cavalry went back. He's fooled them some way. We'll have to hide to the fort, after all. No, I'm going after Madrigo. You go to the fort. Lame Bear will come through these hills, Colonel Graves. If we station our regiment right about here... No, I won't do that. A show of force won't settle this. 
You see, according to Lazat's story, Lame Bear is in the right. I'm going to talk to him. Talk to him? Yes, under the protection of the white flag. A barley. I know Lame Bear. He's been my friend. And the talk might do what fighting never will do. You'll come with me, Bannister. You too, Lazard, if you feel up to it. All right, Colonel. I can risk it if you can. I can tell the signs. Took to cover when they saw us coming. Lame bear, afraid of three men? It's a trap, sir. Maybe. Well, shall we go on? We're fools, sir. We ought to get out of here. We're not back. Nonsense. Pull yourself together. We're only... Use it in cold water if you hit. Where's Biggs? He's back there guarding the path. He's signaling somebody. No more of that engine. Reach. Pull out your gun and shoot at the sky. Now. I beg. Get up there, all of you, and see what's up. Maybe a trick. Friend, glad you dropped by. Moving. The hand behind. Not a very good tie, but it'll do till the boys get here. One more turn to make sure. There. There, that will hold you. Good. Boys are coming back. Good 
Get behind the wagon. Oh, you probably want to sleep. I wasn't. No, it Hey, Matt. Raise your hands. Now drop your guns. You. Get over there. yonder in a gully. Maybe we can make it to them. Carrying him? Of course. We haven't got a chance. That's right. But I'd rather be out in the open when we haven't a chance. So let's try it. Give me a hand with it. Father, get to him, quick! We were told you were headed this way. We came as soon as we could. And just in time. Here, I want to show you something. Grigo and Company. You've met these fellows before. Yes, I have, and I'm glad to meet them again. I thought you would be, Lieutenant. Colonel, you should be out of trouble once White Eagle has talked to his father. In fact, I think you're out of trouble right now. Thank you, friend. We owe you our lives. I want you to understand that, Lame Bear. If you behave yourself, no more trouble from Washington. But if you don't, I'll make plenty of trouble. You savvy that? Lame Bear, savvy. Here's the man who should get the credit for this, my friend. He fine fella, big warrior. What him name? No one knows. I can only tell you that most people call him the Lone Ranger. speak to you people about the same thing. Have a pizza roll, Kimasabi? Look for Gino's pizza rolls and serve this new adorn. Just take them out of the freezer, pop them in the oven for 10 minutes. That's it. Who was that masked man anyhow? I don't know. And I wanted to thank him. Oh, pizza roll! Oh, that was the end of part one of our show, Pearls of Nyoka. 
you'll notice that Clayton Moore is in this again. He's a very good actor at this time. Later on, he became the Lone Ranger, but this is one of the few times you're going to see him on screen without a mask. Oh. Join us next week for Pearls of Nyoka. Thanks again. Good night. Thank you.